is what's neat this week. It's February 2015, and man, have we got a good show for this month. Michael Buddy comes by with some of his latest auto rack creations using the John's 3D vehicles that we've been getting from Germany. Also in the show, we cover the new P42 locomotive from Kato. This model's got the motors in the trucks, small coreless motors that actually perform very well even though they're only about a quarter of an inch in diameter. Also for this show, we cover the prototype modelers meet this past August in St. Louis. This show was an absolute packed show. Great models, hundreds and hundreds of models. I've got a good interview with David Leibach from Tangent Scale Models, and he goes into just a little bit of the philosophy of his company and how he arrives at the conclusion and the decision to design and come out with a product for the market. Also at the show, I ran into a couple of graffiti artists. The man's name is I don't think I'm going to give his full name because it's still regarded as a criminal activity even though I've got to tell you I really don't think it is criminal it's more of an artistry he gave me a photograph of his girlfriend and the great effort that they go through to do their art I didn't know it he showed me a magazine there's a whole industry created around the graffiti around the tagging hobby if that's what you want to call it these guys are professional artists and I mean they've got spray cans they've got tip nozzles there's 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 trade shows on the subject for heaven's sakes I had no idea that it was such such a big fad in fact I sent them home with a couple of large-scale freight cars and asked them to paint their tags on them for me and they did a really beautiful job that I think is gonna add a lot of color to the Garden Railroad. After the prototype modelers meet, Gary Christensen comes by and shows off some of his latest models that he's done in the last year. A couple of beautiful Santa Fe BNSF locomotives and some freight cars. And he explains in simple language and terms how it is that he arrived at the effects on the models. So enjoy this February 2015 What's Neat This Week. These are incredible looking auto racks with the loads Mike. These are John's 3D from Germany and in the October What's Neat this week we introduced these to all our viewers and I saw them for the first time and now these are some finished auto racks that you've completed with tell us what year these are and what it is that you've done Mike. 76 Lincoln Mark IVs. I took one of the John 3D models hollowed it out and made a resin mold and molded a bunch of these in resin and I painted them in different colors did the windows with scotch tape. I also cast uh, an interior from the Custom Metalworks 78 Impala, and I used that for the inside of these cars. And let's see, I made the tires also from the 78 Impala. I resin cast a bunch of those, then painted them, did the bare metal foil on them. That's it. Dude, they're really awesome. We really appreciate checking these out, and thanks for the follow-up. All right. He's yeah. not interested. Yeah. This, this must be what Christmas looks like. Man, it was When you me. have all these boxes of all these beautiful cars from Germany. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at all these beautiful models. That's what Christmas. Look at all those boxes. What these are these cars from Germany that we featured on the show a few months back. And now Mike and Dirk are gonna do some some pretty nice looking street scenes just judging from the Happy smiles here. That's my Cast favorite it. right there. Yeah. Cut it. Extend this for eight feet. And those are printed mm -hmm. and these are cast. Look at these beautiful little end scale buildings for Bachman. Do a cap. The job I've just yeah, finished this well, past now, what's week. The difference I'll give you movie that theater and end scale. And the, and the impressive white looking structure. Got, the white suburban. For sure. This Look is the 4x4 four four pickup. Oh, I, I didn't the back know you ever had one So what are you going to do with the cab? Working on an end scale Bachman shoot this afternoon. It's a really beautiful day for a shoot. And these are the new end scale resin cast buildings that I'm trying to take a few shots of right now. This shot's set up to do this one right here. Too much foam. Couple end scale cars, and I'm in business. For this segment of What's Neat this week, I wanted to kind of discuss and look at the new Kato Amtrak locomotive that they've come out with. What's unique about this locomotive, the curiosity that killed the cat for me, was the fact that no longer is the motor in the main housing of the locomotive, but it's down in the trucks. So there's a motor in the rear truck and a motor in the front truck. And I had to see how that would perform. 
curiosity, like I said, killed the cat with me on this one. I couldn't wait to find out how well this design worked. Now it's nothing new on this Dash 9, this Aristocraft large scale Dash 9, there's actually four trucks in this model, or four motors in this model. There's two model, or two motors in each pair of trucks on that. So there's four 12 volt motors on this. And when you've got three of these running, pulling a constant of cars outside, I'm pulling probably close to seven amps electricity so I use pretty big fuses outside for that but with the Kato design it's much smaller I took the locomotive apart I got really close to the motor and look at this design this motor isn't any more than a quarter of an inch in diameter it's a it's a cordless motor the new technology these days is cordless motors I know Bachman is using them in a lot of their locomotives they run super smooth they don't have to be very big and they've got a lot of torque I put this locomotive through its paces and it really performed well. I ran it for about three hours. Both motors in the trucks never got hot and this thing weighs a, a lot. It weighs many ounces. So it was able to pull easily the Amtrak consist of Walther's cars that I put behind it. So it's worth taking a look at. This Kato locomotive ran through its paces here. Three hours of running, the motors didn't get hot. I think we've got a viable design now that other manufacturers may start looking at and coming out with similar types of designs. For this segment of What's Neat This Week, I've got Lionel Strang in my studio this afternoon. And Lionel, introduce yourself, say hello to the What's Neat This Week folks that watch the show. This is so cool being on What's Neat This Week right here in your, I'm right here in your basement and I'm talking to everybody. Isn't that hey, amazing? Hey everybody out there, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I watched What's Neat this week. Every I've watched every episode, and now I'm actually on it. This is so cool. Well, Lionel, you've got a pretty neat podcast. I listened to your interview last week with NEC, and it was very informative. How is it doing? How is it going for you doing your podcast every month? And tell us about your show. Well, the podcast is called Modeler's Life. It's on iTunes. You can find it on iTunes. And uh, there's a Facebook page called Modeler's Life Podcast. And I started it on August 1st, and basically the theory was I felt that there was more to people than just their model railroading, and I wanted to find out about their life as well. So we interviewed two people a month, uh, the, around the first of the month and around the middle of the month. And we have other things, we have viewer mail and other stuff like that, but it's great. I mean, we've talked to people like Marty McGurk, we've talked to Jim Scores from... Uh, NCE, he was really interesting, and I actually have interviewed Joe Fugate, and that'll be coming up uh, middle of December, and tonight, before we did this, we were interviewing Ken Patterson, which I've been, I've been wanting to talk to Ken Patterson for years. Ken's name, he's, he's well known, and I've been wanting to talk to him forever, and he's a fascinating guy, so I'm looking forward to the, when that podcast comes out. And I think we've had... Uh, in the five months, uh, by the end of the year, we'll have had about 15,000 downloads. That's amazing, 15,000. You can start charging ad space with numbers like that. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that, but that would be a good idea, I guess, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, that's, well, we'll get, we'll see about that. I mean, I'm still learning, and sometimes the sound quality isn't great, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, model railroading has added so much to my life, and now I'm getting to do this podcast, and that's great. Now, I know we see Lionel a lot on Railmasters TV. Train, train Masters. I messed up Joe, I'm sorry. Train Masters TV, working with Barry, and we've seen you working with Miles Hale and a lot of different enjoyable projects that you guys work on. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, train Masters is really cool. Uh, Bear, it's run by Barry Silverthorne. Joe Fugate had told me that uh, he had, was looking to do some video, and around the same time he got an email from Barry Silverthorne, who is an experienced uh, videographer, and uh, he wanted to do these videos, but he had no way of distributing them. So the two of them got together, and then Barry contacted me. He'd seen me on a few YouTube videos and said, you'd be great at hosting these, and I went, no, I wouldn't. He said, yeah, you'd be good, and I said, no, I wouldn't. And finally, he talked me into doing one of them, and it's a lot of fun, and I'm very, you know, I, I don't know if I'm particularly good at it, but I certainly have the ability to speak up. So that's, uh, that's a key quality, I guess, when you're hosting those videos. And I've met lots of neat people. Miles Hale, we did a lot with him, and John Lawrence, and yeah, they're great, and they're on Model Railroad Hobbyist, and it's a subscription, there's previews to see, and there's a monthly or yearly subscription, and it's a great, 
great product. That's awesome. Now tell us again, how do we find your podcast? Where What do we enter into our computer? Uh, if you go to, it's called Modeler's Life. So there's a Facebook page about it, uh, Modeler's Life Podcast. And if you go to iTunes and just type in uh, Modeler's Life, or if you type in my name, Lionel Strang, <laughs> then it'll take you right to where the podcast is, and then you can just download it from there. Well, we all love you, man. We enjoy what you do. We really like seeing you on the TV show with Joe Fugate and all the guys. So just keep doing up the great work for us. I will. This is pretty cool, though, eh? I'm right here. <laughs> it's really cool. All right, you better stop talking. All right, guys. Lionel Strang. He's the best. segment of What's Neat this week, I've got David Leobach from Tangent Models here at the St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet. Now you've seen a lot of David's models because Jeff Meyer shoots a lot and weathers a lot of his models for segments of the show. But it's really nice to have a manufacturer here in St. Louis to talk to. So Dave, tell us, what is it that you've got that's new this year? Well, first of all, thanks a lot for letting me come and be on your show today. Uh, we've got a brand new covered hopper today. It's called the General American Dry Flow Covered Hopper. It was produced by General American Transportation Corporation in 1959. It was uh, production for about four years. It was bought by 16 railroads and many private operators. And this is the first release of the cars uh, available now. So that's the first thing we've got today that's new. Tell me what else do you have? Well, we also have our uh, tank car, which is right here from the steam era. Um, the car was produced first in 1929. It looks like it's almost an end scale model. It's really cool. It's very well weighted and it runs extremely well. Um, it, those lasted all the way up until the 80s, believe it or not, in revenue service. And they're very weathered in the 80s. They're kind of a cool um, opportunity for some neat modeling. So besides the General American covered hopper that we have and the General American tank car from the 20s, we also have the Pullman Standard 4750 covered hopper available now in about 16 new paint schemes that we've released over the past three months. Right here at the show, which is important for your show, is we have released the 4750 in Union Pacific, in Rock Island, in CNW banditized Rock Island, and uh, the NHX Creston, Iowa pink car. So there's four new paint schemes that were released right here at the Prototype Modelers Meet in St. Louis. David, you've come out with such magnificent looking models. They're so obscure, they're like niche models. How do you arrive at the decision to come out with something like this? Well, I, to me it's a number of factors. I think the first one is I spend a lot of time studying freight cars. I've looked at books from every railroad you can think of, like Penn Central or Erie Lackawanna or Burlington Northern back and forwards through time. So I go back to the steam era. I look at steam era consists and trains like Missouri Pacific Steam. Um, there's many books by companies like Morning Sun that have lots of those action shots. So I look at kind of what's the broader car audience uh, or, or cars that are on the railroads. And then I try to see like which cars haven't been done by other manufacturers. Because I don't feel like doing cars that are done by other manufacturers is a very good business strategy. I try to focus on cars that are unique and different and can be executed well by my company. And one of the things I look at besides era is kind of the different colors and paint schemes that I can put on the cars so that that can sell product. 
So that's kind of where I, where I head when I think about new product development. That's really inspiring. The fact is, there's more room out in the water for any young guy who wants to do this, but there's a learning curve. And it looks like Dave's got it pretty figured out. Dave, I really appreciate you being in St. Louis and showing us the awesome models that you've made. Now, you've said you've made nine models now in the past seven years, so I'd almost call you still sort of a newbie on the block, but you really know what it is that you're doing, and we appreciate what it is you've done for us. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, um, I really enjoy to build prototype models myself. Um, I haven't built a lot of models recently because I spent a lot of time building this company, but um, I hope to get back to that. But really, the truth here is that Tangent Scale Models is a company that's oriented towards the prototype modeler. We're run by prototype modelers, and we produce models that look awesome, especially when you want to spend 50 hours of your own time decaling and weathering up and graffitiing up a model. You might as well start with the best possible model that looks like the real thing before you weather it, so afterwards it looks even better. Wow, that is so well said. One more time, if you're gonna spend 100 hours working on something, why not work on something where you're starting with the best? And that's kind of the point. The smaller companies like what Dave has got here, those are the guys that really focus on the prototype stuff that we really care about. It's something that's expensive to do, but we appreciate the fact that they do it. Yep, and we swim with sharks, but we do it every day and we enjoy it. So thanks for the opportunity again to be here, Ken. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, if you remember in the January issue of What's Neat This Week, we discussed the Athern DD40 shot where the locomotive was moving. Well, today we're upping the game by simply adding a big boy, getting the drivers to spin. We've got a crowd, and we've recreated the excursion of number 4014 running, the big boy rehabbed and running in all of its glory. So today I'm working on that shot just to see how it's going to come out. So let's Let's see how this one turns out. It's essentially the same shot that we did do with the DD40, except for I've added a great deal of rail fans, some automobiles that'll blur out the shot. And of course, I've got the wheels and the big boy locomotive doing their thing and spinning, so that on film, it'll create the effect of the big boy rushing along on the excursion after this thing's been completely rehabbed and ready to go. So we've recreated an event in time that hasn't happened yet, but, what a tribute to the big boy 4014 that's going to be running soon. Everything slides just like we did on the last shot. So the theory is that when this thing's down and it's moving, it's going to look like this puppy's running. Check it out. Just like that. It looks like she's moving. Did you catch that? That last video clip was pretty amazing watching that locomotive moonwalk. Sliding that diorama on video, in fact, creates a whole new opportunity on how to videotape locomotives where they could be stationary and simply the scenery is going to move. And it really actually created a cool effect that I didn't realize until watching the same video that we just saw. Now, why didn't I ruin the locomotive? I used lots of Bachmann Easy Lube on the wheels of the locomotive so that it would spin freely. This is conductive lubricant and I use this on all the models and especially on the big boy wheels while she was sliding. I had a couple nails out front holding it in place. So now let me show you the way the photograph came out. This is the photograph before any photoshopping was done to it. You can see the blur effect that pretty much captured what we were after. And then Chris Palomares at Athern 
added some smoke, and this is the amazing results. The smoke, the spinning wheels, tweak the blur effect on the automobiles in the foreground, and boy, I think I'll tell you what, we've recreated the excursion of the big boy locomotive running in all its glory. So thank you for watching this February's photographic tip. Jeff, Gary, what are you guys doing here? What do you got well, going on here? This is a post RPM 2014 model shooting with some of my models we haven't seen. Jeff's the man behind the lens. Some cars I haven't, you know, I haven't brought out before. I'll tell you what, this tank car looks pretty hot. It's pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, Gary, how did, how did you achieve that effect on this tank car? You want to talk about how many tank cars lost their lives before I came to that effect? <laughs> Huh? It's pretty neat looking, man. Yeah. It looks like it's, it's sun faded on top. Well, basically, it's a, what I was trying to go after was a primer, like a uh, primer that had worn, worn, the paint worn down to the primer, let's put it that way. Um, see a lot of that stuff because I guess the elements or whatever, whatever the contents of the car. It's a four layer wash of uh, ivory white acrylic. It's pretty thinned down. And once it's, it's uh, done, I seal it with dull coat, came back in along the edges to kind of uh, get rid of the hard line of the white paint and uh, brushed in, basically kind of hard brushed in with a soft sable brush, some uh, black pastels to soften the edges. And you can see like some of the some of the uh, brush strokes are left in there on purpose for the fact that that's what you're going to see on the cars, like the paint almost peeled off in sheets. So, but still to get the soft edge, I had some pastels and then sealed it all and came back in later to add the, the rust that would come in on the top of the primer. It was, Man, that looks spectacular. It was the first time I ever did something like that, so yeah, I was kind of happy with the results when it, when it was finished. That's really nice, man. Thank you very much yeah, for sharing it sure, with us yeah. today. Thank you. Oh, those new, yeah, the new racks. Hey, um, get a lighter in. Yeah. 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 What is this stuff, dude? Is this like some route or something? Yeah. I'm at a pay phone trying to call home. All of my dreams, I've been so.